Good evening. If you'd like, you can be opening in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 5. Should be there in a few moments. It's an honor to get to speak before you tonight. Tonight, I want to talk about something that I struggle with. And that's the idea of growing as a Christian. Growing as a Christian is it something that we talk about a lot, but it's something that I really didn't have a good definition for. And before we really dive into that, we need to establish a need for growth. So if you're in your Bibles at Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12, the Bible reads, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now please turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, and let's pick up in verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked." We can see where the audience in Hebrews is condemned because they hadn't grown. As it says, by this time they ought to be teachers, we see where they need milk and they aren't ready for the meat. And in Revelation, we can see where the church at Laodicea is condemned because they're lukewarm. They stopped growing. They were stagnant. And these are real dangers, and I believe that they're dangers that if we aren't careful, we can encounter in the church today. So as individuals and, as, and collectively as a group, we need to be growing spiritually. So I mentioned earlier that we talk a lot about the concept of growing as a Christian, and that's a good thing. But I want to ask you tonight, what does that really mean? When I was preparing this lesson, I thought about this a little bit. And though it was a term that I've heard most of my life, I didn't really have a good definition for it. Sure, I had thoughts of what growing looked like and maybe behaviors I'd have once I did grow, but I didn't really have a good definition for it. So when I was preparing this, I actually reached out to some friends, and I basically said, hey, in one or two sentences, define what growing as a Christian means to you. And I got some good responses. If you would, I'd like to read them to you. One said, increase my knowledge of God's word and my commitment to serve him. This includes my desire to love and teach others. Another said, know more today than you did yesterday. Fall for Satan's traps less today than you did yesterday. Another Christian said, to grow as a Christian would be reading and studying the Bible more and applying it deeply to our lives. And then finally, a Christian said, putting the word into practice, to pray, to study, to teach. The best way to go from milk to meat is putting what we read and believe into practice. I thought that these definitions did a really good job of defining what grow as a Christian means. Growing as a Christian involves growing in knowledge. It involves reading the word and it involves knowing what the word says. But growing as a Christian also is applying the word to our lives. It's one thing to know something. Sure, you can go and you can learn and know a lot, but it's another thing to take what you know and to put it into action. Another aspect of growing as a Christian is to teach others. Sure, you can know the word, you can apply the word, but whenever you teach others about the word, that's a level of growth. And finally, growing as a Christian involves cultivating a relationship with God through prayer. So, whenever I really got to thinking about growing as a Christian, in my head I thought about, you can have a baby, right? A newborn baby, Scarlett and Nathan. They're there. And you know, one day, Wesley's going to grow into a full adult, Lord willing. And you know, whenever I think as Christians, it's kind of similar. As a Christian, we're growing, or should be growing, more and more towards Christ. Christ is the perfect example of prayer, of teaching and doing the will of the Father. In the young adult class this quarter, we've been studying John's material that he wrote on looking at Christ through the book of Luke, and it's some really good material. And tonight, I plan to use some of that in that how we can look at the life of Christ and how it can help us to grow as Christians. 
And some of that will be coming from the book of Luke. So what my plan is tonight is just to look at a few things we can look at in the life of Christ that will help us grow as a Christian. So the first thing that I would like for us to consider is prayer. In order to grow as a Christian, we need to grow in prayer. Christ gives multiple examples in the book of Luke that show how important prayer was to him. And if you would, I'd like to flip through a few of them quickly tonight. I'm sure these are familiar to you as if you're in the young adult class, we're studying them now. Or if you're in the auditorium, you likely studied them last quarter. So Luke, and let's start in Luke chapter 5. Luke 5 and verse 16. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Next passage, Luke, 16, or Luke 6, verse 12. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles. Luke 9, verse 16. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. Finally, one more passage, Luke Luke chapter 22. Luke 22, and let's pick up in verse 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed. And his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling, to the, falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So from these passages, we see where Jesus prayed often. We see where he prayed in a variety of circumstances. We have examples of Jesus praying before meals, before making some pretty big moves and appointing the apostles, and before he was arrested and crucified. Prayer was important to Jesus. So in order for us to grow as Christians, it needs to be important to us too. So we established a need to pray, but what do we need to pray for? I'd ask that you be flipping in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and let's pick up in verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This gives us a wonderful example of prayer. If you would, let's go through it again. Verse 9. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We praise God and we ask that his will be done. Verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. In our prayers we ask that God provide for our daily needs. This is really important. Sometimes we feel like we provide for our own because, well, I work, or, well, I have this amount of money in the bank. When that, that's not right. You can have your job, you can have your money, but it all comes from God. In a moment, it could all go away. We can't forget that our true reliance is on God. Verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In our prayers, we ask that God forgive us for our sins. But when we do this, We must not neglect to forgive those who have wronged us. 
Verse 13, deliver us from the evil one. In our prayers, we ask God to deliver us against the evil one and his attempts to ensnare us. And finally, verse 13, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, in our prayers, we praise God. So just in closing about prayer, there's a few things that I want to highlight from this topic. Christ prayed often. Christ prayed in a variety of circumstances. And Christ gave specific instructions on things that we should pray for. So in order for us to grow as Christians, we should pray often. We should pray in a variety of circumstances, from the highs in our lives to the low in our lives. And finally, we should remember to pray for those specific things that Christ told us to pray for. Moving on, the next topic that I want us to look at tonight is we need to grow as Christians by teaching others. The first four books of the New Testament are filled with passages about Christ's teaching. If you would, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4, and let's pick up in verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And it goes on to what we know as the Sermon on the Mount. What I want to highlight here is Christ taught multitudes. Next thing that I'd like to look at is Mark chapter 10, if you'd be turning there. Mark chapter 10, and let's pick up in verse 17. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. But he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions." What I want to highlight here is Christ taught individually the rich young ruler. Be it multitudes or be it individuals, Christ taught. So another thing that I want us to highlight from the rich young ruler is that Christ also didn't neglect teaching even when it wasn't, the he even when it wasn't what the hearer wanted to hear. So just a few things. Christ taught about God's will regardless of the size of the group. Some here, they may have the opportunity to teach large groups of people. They may have the opportunity to be a big example to a lot of people. And that's good. If you have that platform, use it. But others, they just may interact with people on an individual basis. And if that's you, then good. Use it. Regardless of the group size, let's strive to imitate Christ by teaching others about the goodness of our Father. Next, the other thing I want to highlight, Christ was alert to those around him. And he taught, and he taught, I'm sorry, Christ was alert to the needs of those around him, and he taught based on them. And Christ taught others even when the message wasn't what they wanted to hear, such as the rich young ruler. We're told here where the rich young ruler went away sorrowful. Yet, despite that, Christ still taught what he needed. Another thing that I want for us to highlight tonight is that Christ is the perfect example of giving of yourself. Christ did what none of us could do. Christ had experienced glory. He had been with the Father since the beginning. Yet he left all of that to come to this world, to live among sinners who ultimately crucified him. We here don't have the opportunity to give what Christ gave for us. But what I want to ask tonight is are we willing to give of what Christ had, or, or I'm sorry, are we willing to give of what we have been given? Are we willing to give of things like our time? Reading the word, teaching others, that takes time. 
That's not just something that you can just do right off. It takes time to prepare. Are we willing to give of our livelihood? Whenever we give to others, whenever we show hospitality to others, that takes a lot of times money. Are we willing to give that up? Our social standing. If we proclaim what the Bible teaches, we aren't going to be liked by people. Are we willing to give up how people look at us? Are we willing to give up social standing for Christ? And then finally, if it comes down to it, are we willing to give up our lives for Christ? So, just sort of by way of conclusion, we've looked at prayer, we've looked at teaching, and we've looked at the giving of self, which are a few ways that we can be like Christ and grow as a Christian. So, what I want to go to now is I want to ask, how are you doing? I want to ask specifically, what actions are you taking to grow? Are you praying? Are you reading? Are you teaching? Are you making sure that you're fully giving yourself to God's will? For me, whenever I look at myself and I examine myself, I see where I'm falling short. I see where I need to grow stronger in prayer. I see where I need to read more. I see where I need to read better. And I see where I need to do a better job of teaching. I need to teach more. And I need to really make sure that I'm giving my all to God's will. So, moving on. With those things in mind, I see where I need to improve. So how do I improve? And I want to just say right now, I don't have all the answers on that. But I came up with a few things that I'm hopeful will help me, and I'm hopeful they may help you as well. So in regards to growing in prayer, the first thing I have down is to set a time and to set a place and to stick to it. Maybe this is something that you need to wake up earlier in the morning for. Maybe this is something where you set a reminder on your phone for after work. Or maybe this is something you do before you go to sleep. But no matter what the time is, set the time. And then once that time is set, stick to it. There's a saying that goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And I know in my life all too often that's been the case. I'll put prayer and I'll be like, well, I'll pray in the morning. Well, the morning comes, I'm in a rush. I'll put it off to after work. Well, after work comes, I'll pray before I go to bed. Well, I get ready to go to bed and I'm just tired and I fall asleep. It doesn't work. Whenever it comes to prayer, it has to be a priority. The next thing that I have for prayer is, like Christ, let's make sure that we're praying before we make big life decisions. We read where Christ prayed before big events, and this is a great thing for us to do as well. You know, you can make a lot of big decisions in life. You can think of, well, who do I take on a date? Who do I ask to marry me? Where do I buy a house? What job should I pursue? Those are great examples of where we need to be talking to God. So those are some things I had for prayer as far as teaching. For what I have for teaching is I have read and learn the word. And then like prayer, set a time and set a place and stick to it. I know all too often for reading like prayer, it's one of those things where it's easy to kind of push it off and be like, well, I'll do it then. Well, I'll do it then. And it never gets done. Brethren, what I want to encourage you tonight is set a time and stick to it. I'm reminded of Daniel where we're told it was his custom to where he prayed. And like, like him, I think it'd be so good for us if we had a habit where the same time every day we prayed. And whether, you're, whether it's in regards to prayer or whether it's in regards to teaching or if it's both of them, what I want to encourage you to do tonight is I, want, I would encourage you to share specifically with other Christians things that you're doing to grow and then hold each other accountable. Having Christians that you can share close, intimate things like that it can help both of you grow so much. And I know just whenever you have that accountability with other Christians, it helps keep you accountable and it helps you grow. So those are just a few things that I have for prayer and for, and for teaching. And one more thing that I wanted to add on teaching, I didn't have it in my notes, but I had it in another version, is many times you're interacting with people in your day-to-day -day life that aren't Christians or are erring Christians. And what I want to encourage you to do tonight is for those people... Make a list. Make a list of those people that you're routinely interacting with. And maybe on that list, have the thing that they're struggling with. And start preparing right now to help them. Start looking for those opportunities where you might can say something to trigger their mind. Start studying. Maybe the thing they're struggling with isn't something that you're super familiar with. Start reading about it. Start studying it to the best of your ability so you can help them. We all need to be helping each other the best we can to get to heaven. And we need to be helping those that are erring in the world the best we can to get to heaven. 
So one more thing is in closing. I wanted to ask if you've started that walk and that growth process as a Christian. It's hard, but it is so important. Being a Christian is the most important decision that you will ever make. And if it's something that you've delayed doing, I beg you tonight, please don't do it. Maybe it's due to lack of knowledge, and if that's the case, talk to us tonight. Start a Bible study with someone. I can talk to you. The elders can talk to you. So many people in here would love to talk to you. But if it's just for lack of knowledge, don't leave here tonight without saying something. Or if it's just you, you already know what you need to do and you've just been putting it off for some reason. I want you to ask yourself deep down tonight, what's that reason? Because it's not worth it. If you know what God would have you to do and you haven't done it, I beg you tonight, please, please don't delay. Or maybe you are a Christian and maybe you aren't growing as you should. Maybe you've got a sin that you've been struggling with in your life. And what I beg you tonight is don't let tonight go by without making it right. Your relationship with God, your growth as a Christian is the most important thing. And if there is something in your life that's jeopardizing that, I beg you, fix it. Because spending an eternity apart from our God, it's not worth whatever you're struggling with. If we can help you in any way, please make that known tonight. Now let's stand and sing. Thank you for watching this video. We're glad that you have found our channel. And in fact, while you're here, we would encourage you to subscribe to the Jones Road Church of Christ channel. We have several videos already up. And we believe you'll find these to be true to God's word, helpful to you in your journey toward God. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us and let us know how we can help you.